Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken's Training. Today's training, what we're going to do is I'm going to change out a motor for an exhaust fan. Now I've already pulled out the motor, I got it here on the bench, and I've already ordered the other motor, and I've got the brand new motor here on the bench. So they're one quarter horsepower motors, and I'm going to show them to you right now. Alright, here's the motor that I pulled out, and it is an A.O. Smith motor. Here's the brand new motor right here. I got a brand new pulley. Now this motor here, the one that's bad, what's happening is is that this shaft you, is frozen. You just, it is just frozen um, so it, there's no rotation. This here is the brand new one over here. Let me try to get you so you can see everything. Hold on one second. And give you a little zoom right there. So here's the brand new one. You'll notice how easily that spins with just your hands. And the uh, on the old motor, the um, uh, the pulley, which is right here, is just completely frozen. I'm not even going to try to mess with that. So I just measured the diameter and purchased a, a, another a brand new uh, pulley. So we'll be putting that on this one here. Now, when you take a motor like this one that has uh, seized or it's failed in some format and you want to replace it uh, you, you want to order the same information here so you'll, you'll see that I've got a uh, pretty much the same motor this here is the data nameplate off of the one that's bad and you'll notice that that's an AO Smith 316 P345 uh, now the new one which is right over here you'll see that that one there, they, A.O. Smith changed their name to Century, but the, uh, the number here is actually the exact same uh, replacement number. Uh, one other, a few things that are important, you know, of course the voltage is important, the frame is important, uh, the shaft is important, all these things are important when you want to go and take this out and put this brand new one in. This, this mounting, how it's mounted, has to be identical on the new one so that the bolts all line up. Okay, so pretty much we got a brand new motor. It's perfect as far as the replacement goes. First thing I want to do is I want to get my, my pulley on. Since I'm here on a bench, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, here. Now, when you look at the pulley, and here's the set screw right here. Let me get you a zoom in on that so you can see what I'm doing try to get that as tight as possible. Alright, right there. Now, here's your set screw. Using an Allen wrench, you're going to drive that set screw in. The shaft has one section that's flat. The flat section is where the set screw is supposed to rest on, okay? So let me just kind of get that in there. Just not tight, 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 but just enough. Okay, it's just about catching, but I can still move it back and forth. Okay, now I'm going to take my tape measure and I'm going to measure on the old one from the base here to where the pulley begins. That is a, a one and a half inches. So then I'm going to take this one here, put that out to an inch and a half. And basically the, the set screw is not catching there so I have to flip that around do that one more time. All right, let's go here, go to an inch and a half, which is right there, double check, double check, right there, and then I'll cinch that down. Okay, let me just see if that's good. That is good. And then I'll go ahead, get some good torque on that, and really get that in there nice and tight. Alright, uh, I guess one thing that I could have done is I could have put a little uh, lubrication on that to make that a little bit better if I ever needed to take that off. Those pulleys are very inexpensive. That's an $8 pulley, so it's not expensive at all. Okay, so pretty much this 
brand new motor is prepped and uh, we're gonna bring it upstairs and we'll do the install. All right, here we are. We're up on the rooftop. This is exhaust fan number five. And I'm gonna pull off the cover. I, there's usually two screws that hold it in, but I pulled those off already. And here is your blower that needs to turn. Here's the belt that puts every, that uh, transfers the power from the motor to here. And here's the motor. Here's the brand new motor that we want to put in. This motor goes right about like that. All right, so here's the power. See, I got the switch off. Metal's not touching anything. Here's my NCV non-contact voltage. Okay, so it's turning on. I'm going to leave the switch on. I'll take my meter. I'll put it on voltage AC. Hit the uh, backlight here. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, I'm going to leave it like that. Then I'm just going to touch the black and the white leads to make sure we got the 110 volts. And 120. There it is. Put the switch down. Okay, so the switch is working. And we have we do have the correct voltage to this point right here. Alright, so we're Verify good to go. There. The reason why you know this is turning this way is because of the veins. If it were to spin in this direction, it wouldn't pump the air. It has to turn that way in order to pump the air. Okay, so now we're gonna look at our now you want to make sure you get the rotation of the motor correct. Now we want our fan to be turning this way. Now the motor is going to be installed like this. So I want this to turn that way. I want the pulley to turn this way. So looking at it from the motor's perspective, you want it to be turning counterclockwise. That's the correct direction. Now it tells you how to achieve counterclockwise direction or and both clockwise direction right on the the motor right here for counterclockwise red goes on four and black goes on two so currently the red is on the two and the black is on the four they need to be interchanged so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach down here I'm gonna pull out the the, the red and the black and interchange them. The yellow is in the way so temporarily I'm gonna pull the yellow out just temporarily just so I can gain access to the other two. So I'm gonna pull the yellow, put it to the side, pull out the black one, and then I'm gonna pull out the red one. Put the red one goes on number two. I'll put the black one on number, the red one goes on four rather. The black one I'm gonna put on number two. There it is. And I'm just going to put the yellow back. And to make sure that I've got the good, correct rotation without putting my hand near the electrical, I'll just touch the frame here. See, that's turning in the direction I want it to turn. It's turning that way. Now, you can do that with these small little motors. If this was a large motor, it would jump all in your hand but this is just a small little motor where I could do that with so be very cautious if you try that on your own to make sure that you can handle whatever size motor you're dealing with alright so I'm just gonna put this plate back on and then start putting this onto the frame and then I'll show you the rest of the steps alright so here it is I got it all bolted on I got the uh, belt on with and what I feel is an appropriate tension. You can see how much tension I have right there. And I'm getting ready to turn the motor on. Now the belt is a 3L-340. When you put belts on, I like to put them on so you can read them regular, not upside down. The amps on the side of the plate here say that the amperage is 5 and the service factor is 5.4. So I'm going to take my amp probe, amperage AC, and I'm going to clamp that on the black wire here, and I'm going to turn it on. And we're pulling about 5.5 amps. 
It's actually just slightly higher than the service factor amps. So this motor is pulling a little bit more amps than what the rating is on it, but uh, I guess if I, you know, I matched up the same pulley size there, um, so, you know, the other motor was seized up. I didn't know what the amperage was. I'll, um, I like to. So what I did was is I returned the two and three quarter inch pulley that was on the motor, and I purchased just a half inch. Uh, actually, just a quarter inch smaller. It's a two and a half inch pulley. It went from two and three quarters down to two and a half. And now we're going to see exactly how that's going to lay out. So let me show you what I got. Okay, so I've already got the two and uh, one half inch pulley on here, and I've got it tightened down with my Allen wrench. To make sure that this was at the appropriate height, what I do was, is I take a piece of string and I put it on the pulley over here and I bring it down and when the when this piece of string touches here, here, here and here, approximately all at the same time, I know that the height of the pulley that I'm putting in is good. So that's how you do that. Alright, now we want to get this belt on these pulleys. Now when you put a belt on, put it on so that you can read the writing that's on the belt. Don't put it on this way so it's upside down. Put it on this way so it is right side up. Okay, now that needs to be brought over here and it needs to be tight in order to get that tension on there. Uh, in order for me to try to achieve that tension, what I'm going to do is just put a wrench in here, try to give myself a little bit of leverage. I'll try to put it right here in the center like so. Give me a little bit of tension there. And I don't have to go too crazy. And then use my half inch wrench. Oops. Do that one more time. Okay. Wrench in here. Okay, right there, holding down. Make sure it's flat. And while I got tension on that, then I go ahead and tighten up these bolts. Alright, here we go. We're going to turn it on for the first time. 5.4 is the service factor amps. And I'm going to try to show you the amp draw here. Here we go. Bouncing around a little bit. It is right at the upper end. I'm going to let that run for a couple of minutes and I'm going to see how warm my motor is getting. Overall the operation looks pretty good. It looks like it's running pretty smooth. Let me feel the motor see how warm it is. That's running real cool. It's nice and cool. Let me shut that off for a second. Now I tried to get that as level as I could. One other thing that you can do is you can throw a level on there just to see how well that belt looks like it is. Let me just go ahead and do that while you're here and on camera. And let me show you the belt. All right, so like this. I'm just gonna throw that on there. And I'm just gonna see what kind of bubble I've got there. Eh, that's pretty good. It's very close. The belts, they have a little bit of leeway to them. Um, let me go ahead and turn it back on. It certainly sounds nice. It's running smooth. Just am concerned about that amperage. Let's see what that amperage is now. Let's see what that's doing. It bounces. Five point four is the service factor ramp. So I really would like it to be below five point four the entire time. 
I think what I'm going to end up doing is dropping this down another quarter of an inch and get that to spin a little bit slower because I really want that to be below 5.4. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that down again. Before I went and took this off, I decided to, to um, see what the amp drawer is with no belt. So you can see I've got the belt off right here. I just have the, the pulley on here. I put a couple of black marks so you could see it. I'm going to turn it on. So there's your pulley turning, just the, just the motor itself. And now let's see what the amp drawer is with just the motor. So just the motor is giving me already kind of a high amp draw there. The 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 part that the that's the the part that it's pulling is like nothing. So I'm just gonna leave this pulley on and call it a day. So I'm gonna put this back to normal right now. By the way, I'm gonna show you the trick how to do this by yourself. So what you do is you take your adjustable wrench or something like that, put it on here, get it kind of close, hold this in place like so, put your tension on there, then while you've got your tension, then you want to go ahead and turn that nut. So that's basically, that wrench is acting as your third arm is what it's doing. Once you get one side done, and you got that top one done over there and then you just take this wrench off transfer it to the other side and do the same thing with the top left one over here get a little tension on there hold that oops go up that way Alright, so basically that's how you do that. I'll uh, tighten up these two right now. Alright, so I put it back in service. Here is your amp meter here to show you the final product. And that's going to be the best I'm going to be able to get this. It's uh, pretty reasonable. You know, I can live with that. Anyways, all I have to do is unclamp this, shut this off. I'll go ahead and put this switch back in here right now and then I'll put the cover on all right so there's the cover I put the I put that switch all back to normal so that's fine and now I put the fan on I just have to put the cover on very gently all right now I'm gonna put the cover on That. You got to do it while the motor's running because you can't gain access to the switch. And there's two screws that hold it on, one here and one on the other side. Okay, that that include that concludes the uh, project of uh, replacing the motor for an exhaust fan. And I hope you enjoyed this uh, video, and I hope you uh, learned a few tricks if. Uh, out of the video. If you like the video, please click on the like button. Please check out my YouTube channel, Ken Training. And if you'd like to leave a comment, by all means, leave a comment on the, uh, the comment section. And, uh, and that's it. I'm going to catch you on the flip side.